<laughs> um, so I'm Stephanie Schubert with Pacifica Network, and we're happy today to have Joseph McGuire of KSVR in Mount Vernon, Washington. He's going to talk about multi-track editing for live events, and I'm going to turn it over to you, Joseph. Okay. Yes, I'm Joseph McGuire, KSVR. I'm kind of operations guy. I like operations coordinator. Maybe I'll steal that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and so I've done some technical uh, and uh, webinars before. So they invited me to do another one. And so I came up with this because we just actually recently had uh, another recording and discovered. So I'll share our screen and I will begin. Fantastic. And whoop, there we go. Multi-track recordings in live settings, which is very much like multi-track recordings in studio settings. It's just doing multi-track recordings. So just as a reminder of people that what we're talking about is if you have a digital audio workstation, you have the ability to have different tracks with different aspects, um, different sounds, different audio. If you're a musician, you can have drum tracks, you can vocals and stuff. Uh, where what we mm -hmm. do is we take each person who is on a mic and we feed them into a track. And then that person's track is editable by itself. And so that's what we mean by multi-tracking. And so you can adjust it. And so when you go back into uh, editing mode, you can take out stuff that's like not them talking. That's maybe, you know, someone else coughing, whatever. <laughs> and so that's in essence what uh, multi-tracking is. And I like to ask if there's any questions because I like an interactive kind of thing because, you know, we're not a big crowd. And we'll wait till Kevin Paul. Ah, there he is. Patuchik. Hello, hello. Yes. Anyway, so this is basic multi-tracking. What it means, each microphone, each person is on a track on their digital uh, recorder, the digital audio workstation. So this is the game changer. This is the new way. This is the way things have changed in the last few years. And that's what are called, I call, digital, digital audio boards or digital audio mixers or whatever you want to call them. And uh, these are unlike the old analog mixers. You don't have all these plugins for effects and sends and stuff because it's just everything is digitized. When the uh, audio, uh, analog audio has gone into the board to the XLR jacks, it is digitized right there and then sent to... Well, you can send it to headphones. You can send it to XLR outputs like here. Um, hmm. uh, XLR outputs, you can send them to these places uh, or it'll go through a USB cable directly into your computer. Also, they have the ability to record on board. The one on the right is a zoom uh live track one l-8 live track l-8 and it has built in sd uh, sd card slots that you can put 64 gigs or whatever and it'll directly record onto those the allen and heath as you see the difference in prices this is just so for people who know that you don't have to spend a lot of money for this the allen and heath not only digitizes it, but you can do things to it like compression, like gating, like EQ, the stuff that you would normally in the old days have to do outside of the mixer. You know, you'd have to run it into an EQ or run it into some sort of gate or some sort of compressor. Uh, now, with the Allen and Heath, you can plug in through a USB port, you can plug in a hard drive or a thumb drive. And if it's a hard drive, you can then record multi-tracking. If it's a thumb drive, you can only record stereo. Looks but, like uh, Davine has a question. 
Yes, please, please. So you just mentioned compression. Um, after you finish this presentation, mm -hmm. can you go in a little bit about compression and what it does? Certainly. Certainly. And I'm talking about dynamic range compression, not uh, MP3 compression, <laughs> just to make sure that we're on the same track, so to speak. So um, the, the other thing about the, the, the Zoom L-8, which makes this kind of a, a multiplex knife or a Swiss Army knife, is you can use it as a recorder or you can use it as a mixer to do live sound, like if you're doing PAs and stuff, or you can do both. So it's a very versatile machine for its price, which what Zoom does. And it's nice because it has four built-in headphones plug-ins, quarter-inch jacks, so that you can plug in four people. So they can, this is also, you know, so for those people who do podcasts or whatever, or you have it in a room, uh, so it can be the whole package. You can do a recording of people, uh, like a interview situation, it it's a very use versatile tool. Anyway, so any other questions? Okay. So what you see on your DAW and how you set it up is you have your tracks. So when it's when you plug in your digital mixer board, it will give you. Uh, something to point at in your USB settings for sound. Instead of the built-in uh, microphone and built-in speaker, it'll show you the name of whatever it does and look like. So you plug that or you switch that on in your sound. And uh, and I don't know if you have to download drivers. That was taken care of by someone else. But anyway, and so then you can go to your digital audio workstation and choose however many tracks you have available on your microphones. So like track one would be mic channel one, track two would be mic channel two, and same thing for the L-1 or eight. You just basically choose which ch mic channel is on the track. I'm Hopefully I'm being clear on that because if I'm not, I, I want questions. <laughs> I guess I'm clear. Okay. So this is just a picture of our last live setting. You see very much like if you were in studio, you have each microphone at the table. And uh, that's the, the, the digital audio mixer board we used. And then you just feed it in. And then people, and at the same time, we're also powering up PA speakers using the... Uh, the uh, XLR outputs. So we're actually doing live sound for the event and recording the present presenters. And it's all going on to an SD card. And so when I come back into the station, I plug it in through a USB plug into my computer and I just download the tracks. And you can set it up to have multi-tracks and have a single track just for coverage um, and you can mute different tracks and such like that. And as you see down here in the right hand corner of the picture, you see the, the um, display where you have the, the play button, the record button and stuff like that in the different states. Any questions? Uh, yeah. Uh, is it yes. Joe or Joseph? What, Joseph is fine. Okay. So Joseph, uh, what kind of, um, uh, digital editing uh, software do you use on your computers at the studio? Reaper. Reaper, okay. Uh, uh, which I highly recommend to anybody because it's really a great piece of software and it's only $60. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. Okay. It's, and it's, you, purchase the, you purchase it, you keep it, they give you two versions for that $60. You don't have to go beyond the two versions that they sell you, but... Um, after that, two more versions cost $60. So, all right. As their website says, not so much. <laughs> right. And I did, maybe someday I'll do a, a better, more in depth Reaper because I think the last time I didn't do as good a job as I could have. 
Yeah, I look forward to that because we've been using Audacity for many years, which, as you know, is free, but it can be a bit of a learning curve, too. Uh, Well, everything has a learning curve. There's lots and lots and lots of tools that are in Reaper native that you don't have to have plugins for or they Mm. have native plugins. Okay. Okay. Anyway, enough of my sales talk about Reaper. (laughs) So here we go. There's Reaper. There's Reaper in a nutshell. So this is one three-person presentation. And you'll see it's on track two. In track three and track four are the presenters. Well, there are uh, two presenters and uh, and, and, and a person who inter- introduced them. And so you see it looks kind of um, messy because... Two of the mics, one was supposed to be for uh, getting people to ask questions on mic. That never actually happened. And the other one was just open for reasons I'm not quite sure, just because we didn't turn it off. (laughs) And so uh, you will see that this is one of the Reaper functions that recently came. You'll see there's a colorful uh, waveforms that will tell you how hot your... uh, Piece, any one piece of audio is red, green, hot, cool. And that's a really wonderful function that helps you uh, decide what to do. So uh, any questions? Okay. So now. Yeah, sorry. I couldn't get my thing unmuted. Um, that's okay. Just a side question. Is yellow the optimal color that you want to be in? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. That's uh, you can. Uh, it's based on loudness. You can adjust it to yellow being whatever, you know, negative 21, negative 23, whatever. Um, in my case, yes, yellow is, is yellow and sort of lightish green. <laughs> okay. Good question. And so what is the purpose of this? Well, removing extraneous sounds. One of the things in the old days, if someone, um, well, if there was uh some sort of noise on one of the things you you and there were someone else was speaking say someone bumped the microphone on one channel there was nothing you could do about it now because if they're not speaking they bump the microphone and the other person's speaking you can take it out but you also want to find things like applause you don't want to keep it in so that's one of the things you looking and removing extraneous scent noise sounds And so then continuing between, so now we have, we, if you go back here, you see that the person is in red is the introduction. She was really loud. So one of the things is I normalized her into good sound, good volume. And then I just started taking out the extraneous sounds. This is, this, as far as I know, you can do with any digital audio workstation but I find it pretty easy in Reaper. And so uh, now we're deleting noise. Now, there is one thing we cannot do, (laughs) and this happened in one of the presentations. Someone's car alarm went off. (laughs) And uh, I have some other tools that I tried to use to get rid of it, but it was on, 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 that's just the way it is in live recording sometimes you're going to get a jet going over and someone's car alarm (laughs) and you hope well maybe it's on it you know you can get rid of it some other way but generally you can't so that's live recording in a nutshell so but um and so then um we look at normalization uh it's another function of reaper that each one of those clips or items as they call it can be individually normalized so it makes it the same level all the way across so then then we have the final outcome so you see all that noise and all that's the the people are now basically at the same levels um and if it doesn't quite work and you want to listen to it you can tweak it because you can tweak each person's little uh spoken word phrase and 
but you get a sound that doesn't sound exactly like you're recording in the studio. It's still outside, but you're getting a great sound that people can listen to without having to go, what? What did he say? <laughs> Why did that thing thump? <laughs> and that's why I said this was going to be short because it it just involves um, um, that. And so I'm looking for questions to help me out here. <laughs> Besides the compression, I'll get to the compression bit <laughs> in a minute. And I'll just take a minute to welcome Kevin. Hi, Kevin. How are you? Doing well. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Can you remind us where you're calling from? Uh, I'm in New Jersey, WTSR, college Jersey. radio station. What's that? It's a college radio station. Excellent. Um, anyone come up with any questions? Uh, I had one. Uh, it's on the normalization. I'm guessing that the normalization sort of algorithm, for lack of a better word, is fairly close to the same algorithm uh, you would use for compression. Is that right or wrong? Uh, <clears throat> loudness normalization. I don't know if uh, I, I've, I've spoken upon this in the past, but it's been a while. Loudness normalization is a standard, an algorithmic standard that judges the sound by basically perceived sound. And so it listens to it and decides for the whole piece, whatever, that should be this loud. Right. And if anything, any uh, element of the sound, any peak that goes over the zero point, it kicks in a limiter. So there's a limiter involved in this, mm -hmm. not a compressor. Okay. It's a brick wall limiter. Uh which I tend to like to do compression before I have a brick wall. <laughs> yeah, because isn't the effect of the brick wall is to eliminate that peaking sound that's that's you know breaking, so to speak, or yes, clipping. Absolutely. Clipping? Okay. So your compression, if you're running the compression phase first, uh, you're basically taking the the parts that are clipping and sort of dropping them down so they don't clip anymore. Yes. And then we call it running, light compression. Yeah. And then the second phase of running normalization, you're basically evening out the highs and the lows. So they're all in sort of a medium range, yeah. I guess. Well, you don't want to lose. So this is where we'll talk about dynamic compression a little bit. You don't want to lose your dynamic range. Right. Because um, let me... <laughs> Uh, let's see if I can find something. Uh, well, I think it, I think I know at least what you mean by dynamic range. I mean. Oh, I, I understand, but but um, I'm sorry. Your name again? Div it's Fred. Fred. Oh, uh, no, uh, Dev. 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 Davine. Davine. Thank you. Sorry. I always like to hear more about dy dynamic range again because it's kind of complex for me. It is very complex, but I um, kind of came up with something. And we'll see. Um, okay. Um, Oops, that's not what I wanted. Um, there we go. Okay. Why are you doing this? <laughs> it's confusing me. Oh, well, let's just get rid of that. There we go. That's why. Pressing the wrong button. So we all know about waveforms. So... Uh, I need to get rid of the There we go. And we all know about peak normalization or normalization where when you amplify it it goes to the highest peaks. 
which as you see in my little circle, there's like those four or five highest peaks. So anything below that, everything goes up at the same amount. It's just an amplification. And so we all uh, maybe know about dynamic range. Uh, that's between the lowest and highest. As I say, quiet as a mouse, loud as a rock band. And there's can be 140 dB difference between low and high. And then um, one of the, stop. Okay, one of the classic examples, classical music always has a lot of high, high uh, dynamic range. You know, you, there's uh, 1812 Overture is usually the classic one I choose from little tiny whatevers to giant cannons. So what we do is we have the original here, and then we have a normalized zero dB highest peaks. Then we compress it, and you'll see that a lot of those peaks are pushed down. And then we renormalize it to make it louder, so there's less dynamic range. Mm. Because if you look at the normalized zero dB, you'll see there's a lot of lows to highs. But when you compress it, all of a sudden, you don't have as many lows to highs. And so... That's the purpose of, of dynamic range. So what you want to do is you want to pick a threshold. And then if you look at the one to the left, you'll see that you're going to want to reduce it 10 dB, the peaks to the threshold level, which is where you want it to be when you're done in dB. And then you'll see if it's two to one, it'll reduce 10 to five dB. And if it's there we go, if it's four to one, it'll reduce it to ten dB because it's dividing it by two and dividing it by four. Mm. For those people who understand division, which is I have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's pretty much what you're trying to do is you're trying to reduce the the highest highs and get them down closer to the lower lows. And I think I've, I actually think, uh, I, so that's, that's pretty much it. Wait a minute, just a second. Oh, and there's things like attack release. These are things you kind of learn how fast the compression starts to get to the threshold, how far it releases. You know, if you have a drum, you want a fast attack and a fast release. If you're with a violin, you want a slow attack. Mm -hmm maybe a medium size release with voice. I use a very fast, almost complete attack and then sort of let go. Cause the voice, when we talk each consonant and vowel, especially consonant pops up right away. We have another question. Yep. 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 Please. So is it possible for you to do that live where we could get a comparison of what it's like whenever things are too high and you compress it down to where it fits better. Yes, you can do better. this live. Yes, you can. Um, no, I'm asking you to do it now. Oh, uh, no, I can't. <laughs> Sorry. So, all right, I'll 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 check on YouTube and see if there's a YouTube uh, well, guide on that. Well, let, let me, let me, let me see if I can. Uh, um, let me go into, there we go. And Sorry, I hit. Uh, there you go. That's what I wanted. Uh, and so, uh,
Okay, we'll use this. So I, there are lots of plugins for compression. This is the one I use. It's from Germany. It's called, it's Melda Productions. And uh, so I'll call up the module. <clears throat> and everybody can see this, right? Yes. Okay, good. And so this is a compressor. This has got a nice, simple set of controls. You know, it has the uh, threshold, the ratio, the attack, the release, and something else I'm not going to go into too much, knee size. And so if I look at this file over here, I want to say bring it down to 10 dB. So there's the threshold. I've already got it. It's 10 dB. And if I hit render, now you see all those peaks are gone. Mm. I call it giving it a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want it a crew cut or do you want it a, a shag? <laughs> a trim. Yes, or a light trim. And so that way, and now I can go into, back into this and click on um, normalize. And this will kind of help you understand, I think. And now you see that it's it's taller. It's got more dynamic range. If I went to, that was loudness normalization to negative 21, what I'll do is peak to zero and it gets even bigger. Hmm. So all of a sudden it becomes louder because you've, you've reduced those peaks that are stopping it from getting very loud. Did that help, Devine? Any questions? Because that's that's pretty dynamic. That's pretty much dynamic range compression. <laughs> mm. I think that's it for me for questions. Okay. Uh, I sort of lost myself. Oh, I know. There we go. <laughs> Stop sharing. <laughs> Stop sharing. Okay, there we go. Do you use uh, lavalier mics? Say again? Do you use lavalier mics for uh, live stuff or do you have, what kind of mics do you use? Um, dynamic, uh, no, we don't use lavalier mics uh, because uh, we use Dynamics, SM7s, um, just regular ordinary microphones. Okay. Because we're not videoing, we're just recording in the old fashioned way with audio. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> um, I like using boom boom mic pulls or boom pulls on mics stands so they can get real close. Oh, there was something in the chat. Was that? Oh, got to get to my class. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, I'm uh, with that brief tour into. Uh, Somehow I wound up in share again. <laughs> Just click on that. Good grief. Anyway, with that brief diversion into dynamic range compression, which I always like to talk about, it took me, you know, eight years to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> but did that help? Yeah. And you can do this live. They they have they uh, live for voices. You you can get. Uh, boxes that will do all this for you live. Um, the bringing it back to digital audio boards that Alan and Heath can do it on the fly as you're recording because you can do all the settings in there. So you sort of re removed all the, the extra boxes you need. Can you do yep. that? So, so oh, go ahead. Uh, Fred, go ahead. That that Zoom mixer you have, the LP8 yes. or the L whatever eight. L dash eight. Yeah. Does that have uh, the the built in uh, capability of recording live with yes. your compression and uh, normalization settings? Preset? No, it does not. Okay. That's why it's only four hundred dollars. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Davey. 
So we use Hindenburg as as a um, audit editing software. Mm-hmm. I used it for many years, and so that kind of helps me because now I understand if you if you lower that or compress that those highs, then you hit the normalize button. Right. Then that brings it up to the levels that Hindenburg or whatever system you're using thinks it ought to be. That helps well, a lot. It's, but you gotta you gotta pull the highs down first and then normalize. Yes. yes. Okay. And I don't know if you have the full version of. Uh, we do. We've got in, the pro version. Okay, so then it has a, it has a loud. If, at least the last time I used it, it had a loudness normalizer built in. Yeah. Um, yes. It does. So I just do- didn't. I just didn't understand the concept. Right. I understand well. <laughs> Do you do that manually then, Davine? You pull those the the highs that stick out. You just go through it and I just yeah. So I I cut where they're high and then I I pull them down. Uh, but I didn't know. I didn't understand that the next step is to normalize. Yep. So that it brings everybody up. Yep. Yep. Oh, every, that's, every I'm glad that I, I could be helpful. Yeah, that is helpful. It is really good about removing a background noise. I, I like Hindenburg for that. Okay. Uh, that we use Isotope for stuff like that. Isotope, which I don't, you know, it's a spendy. It's a two hundred or three hundred and ninety nine dollar program that fixes audio very well. Oh. I've been using um well you showed that to me. Yeah, Adobe Enhance. Yeah. Oh yeah, that does it all. That's free. <laughs> it's free. Yeah, Adobe Enhance. Just mm-hmm. go to podcast.adobe.com, I if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. And they give you um, uh, a free X number of megabytes and X number of hours, whatever. Yeah. It's and you, you can't any make any adjustments or anything, but I don't care. I'll make my own adjustments. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I really appreciate being able to use that. Yes, it 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 saves it 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 really helps with the iris interviews where they're using their computer. Any other questions? No. Okay. <laughs> Thanks guys for joining us. Yes. And thank you Joseph again. It's always Oh, absolutely. Fun. I have no idea what I'll ever talk about again, but <laughs> maybe we can <laughs> go over Reaper in more detail. I mean, I would love it. <laughs>